Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to cover how to single dose with the Brevo Oracle Touch Machine. Single dosing means that you measure each dose of coffee beans for each shot of espresso you pull rather than filling beans into the hopper. The purpose of single dosing is to improve consistency in espresso making by adding more control to your brewing process. Because when you single dose, you know exactly how much coffee is going into your grinder. So if you have a low retention, consistent grinder, this leads to a very consistent dose every time. Another really good reason to single dose with the Oracle Touch is if you want to use a lower dose than what your tan fan gives you. For example, my tan fan is calibrated to give me about 20 grams, but for some beans, I would like to use only 18 grams. With single dosing, I can adjust my dose anytime without messing with a tan fan. The downside of single dosing is that it adds a few steps and a bit more time to your daily routine. As part of this video, we will also evaluate the retention performance of the Oracle Touch grinder and tan fan by weighing the beans before they go into the grinder and measuring what comes out. In this video, I will cover three variations of single dosing with the Oracle Touch. If you want to recommend a different way to single dose, please add it to the comments below the video. For the first method, we will single dose with the current factory setup, so without changing anything on the machine. For the second method, I will remove the tamp fan and grind a single dose directly into the portafilter and then tamp manually. For the third method, I will test the single dose funnel and bellows that I bought on Etsy from a company called Fused Line. I paid for this myself. After I show you how all three of these methods work, we'll review the performance numbers and then consider if there is an optimal method if you decide that single dosing is for you. For the first method, you don't need to change anything from your factory setup. First, make sure your hopper is completely empty and the grinder free of beans. Measure your beans, add them to the hopper, start grinding, and when you hear that all the beans have been ground up, stop the grinder by pressing the screen or by pushing the handle again. Then, just brew like you do normally. The benefits of this method are that you can try this out right away. You don't have to invest in any tools or make any changes to your machine. It's also fairly fast because the tamp fan is still tamping for you. The downside, as you will see from the numbers later, is that we still encounter inconsistency issues. For the second method, remove the tamp fan by pulling it down. Then, measure your beans, add them to the hopper, start grinding, and when you hear that all beans have been ground up, stop the grinder by pressing the screen or by pushing the handle again. From here, things get a little messy. You'll want to carefully remove the portafilter and try to lose as little coffee grounds as possible. Then you have to conduct your puck prep manually. This is my least favorite method because it takes much more time, it's messy, and it's easy to lose coffee grounds in the process, which defeats the purpose of single dosing. This method also removes many of the advantages for getting the Oracle Touch in the first place. For the third method, I tried the single dosing funnel and bellows that I bought on Etsy from a company called Fuse Line. To set this up, you'll have to remove your factory bean hopper first. Make sure there are no beans left on your burrs. Install this first part into the grinder collar. Then install the second part on top of the part that you've already placed and twist. The machine will then recognize that there's a hopper in place. Next, measure your beans. Add them into the funnel. Place the weight on top of the beans. Start grinding. Place the bellows on top of the weight. When you hear the last of the beans being ground up, start pressing on the bellows to push as much of the coffee grounds into the portafilter as the tamp fan continues to tamp. Then stop the grinder 
from the screen or by pushing the handle. Then, just brew like you do normally. The benefits of this method are that it makes single dosing easier than when you're using the factory hopper, and the puff blower helps to reduce grinder retention to improve consistency. And overall, it makes single dosing more pleasant and effective. The downside is that you have to spend about $60 to get this whole setup. And I guess it's worth noting that the gray color is slightly different from the gray color of the machine, but that's barely noticeable. So now that we've covered three different methods for single dosing, how did each method actually perform in terms of dose consistency? To test the three methods, I used a few rules. First, I verified that the grinder was free of any beans. Second, I measured 18 grams of beans on two different scales. Third, I teared the portafilter before grinding and then verified the dose on two different scales. Finally, I did not clean a tan fan in between grinds because I wanted to simulate the most convenient manner of single dosing. But to make sure I had neutral measurements, I did a full cleaning of the grinder, grinder shaft, and tamp fan between each of the three methods. Then I ran what I expected to be a throwaway grind at the beginning of each method. I still weighed it to see if we could derive any information, but I knew that it would be off. Then I weighed three different iterations of grinding for each of those methods. So here are the results. I'll just cover the weights from scale one. For the throwaway grind, for the factory setup, the throwaway grind was 16.6 grams, so we lost quite a bit of grounds there. Grind 1 was 17.6, grind 2 was 18.2, yeah, that's right, a little bit more than the initial dose, so probably some of the retention from the throwaway grind being loosened up and then incorporated into that dose, and grind 3 was 17.8. For single dosing without a tan fan, the throwaway grind was 16.9 grams. Still a lot of loss to retention here. Grind 1 was 18.1 grams. Grind 2 was 17.2 grams. And grind 3 was 17.9 grams. For the fused line single dosing setup, the throwaway grind was 16.6 gram, similar to the other methods. Grind 1 was 17.8 grams, grind 2 was 17.9 grams, and grind 3 was 17.8 grams. While this data is limited, it still provides interesting insights. After doing a complete cleaning of the grinder, shaft, and tamp fan, we have a loss of over 1.5 grams in some cases, which is substantial. The subsequent shots are closer to the original measured dose, because I guess all the nooks and crannies where grounds get stuck are filled. If you have watched my series of video on the consistency of the Oracle Touch, in the end, I would say that the primary reason for the Oracle Touch inconsistencies are dose fluctuation from grounds retention in the grinder shaft and tamp fan collar. As you can see, the fused line method is yielding the most consistent results in this limited test. And this is in line with my experience with using this method for a few days now. There is still some amount of retention, but it's small. And most importantly, I'm getting a consistent dose so I can achieve predictability in my brewing. Overall, this method works really well, and I have to say, I really like it. And I think this is the way that I will use the Oracle Touch from now on. It's basically what I had wanted from the Oracle Touch for years now. If you are already single dosing, or are interested in single dosing, I highly recommend the fused line setup. It is quite nice. So if you decide that single dosing is for you, there are different container options that allow you to measure all your doses ahead of time so that you don't have to stop to measure beans in between shots. This makes for a really nice single dosing workflow. That's it for this video. If you thought this video was helpful, please remember to click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.